Um, so now that you have your team, your public relations, your social media, your business plan, there's a lot of other nuances here. And do you mind if we pull up Udemy on your computer quick? Sure. I just want to look at what I put there because it, um, I, I put them in a particular order and I just want to make sure that, uh, that it actually works. seems like every three years, but it's every really three months. It's such a pain because you run out of things, you know? I know, now they're, I mean, it's just they're not letting you, you reuse ones no. that you used like four times ago, right? right? It's right. got a little deeper. So I'm running out of ones. What you do is just you use the same word and you use a different digit at the end nine times. It wouldn't let me do that. It, it wouldn't let me do it either. Oh. It said it was too close. I've been doing that for years. It won't let me do it. Oh, I, I tried to just go one, two, three, no. four, five, yeah. six. It's, it's, it's too close to the other, the previous yeah, one. Yeah, that's what happened with me. It's no. Mm -hmm. well, who do you have pull with? Huh? I don't have pull with anybody. <laughs> that's all I do. Is I just, yeah. Are you kidding? I couldn't remember. That, uh, so I'm starting to write them down because that's what I used to do. Uh -huh. And it says it's too close to the previous mm -hmm. password. No. Er. All I do is just change the last digit. <laughs> Maybe it's because I changed the last digit. Maybe. Mm, maybe. That's a, when they first said that to us, you know, you have to remember, and I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and so I just, <laughs> I just picked the word, it, it, and then I changed the end digit. Yeah, I, I, I've changed I the last three forget, digits. I always forget my password. It's terrible. I always have to, like, request I forgot my password. Me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For everything. It's awful. I've been trying to keep it to four passwords, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I just changed digits. Well, now, and then the problem is now the different emails. I got my university email, I got my business email, and I got my personal email. That's why I, I have four passwords. <laughs> and there's one password I use for the bank that has nothing to do with anything, anything. else. That's, good. <laughs> that's the best. So, so I do have another class up there that's called crowdfunding campaigning, what I'm thinking of. So now, you do have the business plan, you have social media, public relations, networking, and building a team. But crowdfunding campaigning, the actual campaign itself, you need to assess how you want to get that message out. So social media is the content, public relations is your actual press releases, what you're saying to the media. But now it's like the campaign speech, the campaign piece where you're actually going out there and talking to people. Whether it's hosting a seminar, whether it's um, take, doing a video blog, whether it's um, showing people the actual human side of what you're doing. Mm. What what we try to do with Rowdy Crowd TV is we now host a weekly Google Hangout. Um, have you ever heard of Hangouts before? Google Hangouts? Mm, no, but I, I've had a Google interview done where everyone's up on Google and then they're typing and you respond back. Oh, awesome. Was it a video interview? Um, no, it was a voice. Oh, that's awesome. Voice interview. And then... And then so the different reporters, one from Canada, one's from the West Coast, and so they're all talking and then there's the transcription that goes across and then your transcription, what you say happens. That's really oh. interesting. That's interesting actually. That's, well that's one way, that could fall into this bucket here. Because the, the, what I think you guys might like for a Google Hangout is all you need is a webcam on your computer. Mm -hmm. You could set up a time, broadcast it live, and the great thing about broadcasting it live is, as soon as the broadcast ends, it gets archived on YouTube. Oh. So you could do like, wow, yeah, I know that. It's really cool. It's a, it's a. You have to join. You have to have a Gmail account. Which I do. You have to join Google Plus, which is their social network, and it's easy to join that. It's just like a quick three. They automatically put that in there when they when they switched over recently. Mm -hmm. It's like a plus sign. You click on that. And it's like, would yeah. you like to join Google? Yeah. Yes. And then, um, and then it's cool because now, 
we've we've essentially started our reality TV show. We're on our sixth episode. It's running tonight. We've done oh. six of these episodes since the last time. Ah, so congratulations. Have, wow. Thank you, yeah. So, you know, we needed to do that because we actually had to show that what we're going to raise money for eventually is actually happening now. Like, we're trying to do it now, mm -hmm. and and we are doing it now, but the quality, of course, is not your the best quality for a reality TV show, but it's something. Mm -hmm. And it's showing our network of professionals that, that we met and all these interesting people. Um, and actually, in this crowdfunding campaign piece, this is one of the major things is, the biggest thing you do in these first three months period is provide your first token of value, which is telling people what crowdfunding is. And it, it could also fall into the networking piece, but because crowdfunding is so new, the first really piece of conversation whenever you're trying to promote anything in crowdfunding is, um, yeah, I'm just wondering, have you ever heard of what crowdfunding is? And then they say, no, what's that? I was like, oh, well, have you ever heard of Kickstarter? And then if they still say no, then you know you really have to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. but, it, but, it, but you know, once, once you say Kickstarter, they say, yeah, that, that's a form of crowdfunding, that's rewards-based crowdfunding. And then, then you can kind of tell them like what you're trying to do. But to me, one of the like a, as a practical step in campaigning, when you tell people what crowdfunding is, that's your first token of value because maybe you're awakening a hidden dream that they had inside of them if they now know they could raise money this way. But you never leave the scene of this conversation without getting their contact information. That's part of building the crowd. Every opportunity to speak with someone, you almost have to change your mentality to say it's now time. Like, if we're going to do this, we're telling people what it is, but we never leave a conversation without getting a card, getting their number, getting their email. And, but, you know, there's, on this, there's one interesting thing uh, for us, I, I see. When it comes to that, <coughs> I, I see the center and as more of, you know, listening, and, and you know this, um, listening to understand about the issues that are out there and not so much taking you know, you know, their information and bringing it back necessarily for the center. And so I think there's this fine line that we have to talk about, about the Center for Compassion, Creativity, and Innovation, its purpose, its mission, its vision, yes. and how we actually interact. Because for me, the center is something that is bigger than all of us and it creates a community that I think we all want right it, it when you when you help somebody else it builds literally and figuratively in your mind you know you're you're firing off dopamine and oxytocin inside but then it's building up that's building up trust between you and the people that you're dealing with and I want to make sure that that trust is number one yes. and and in the forefront when someone thinks of CCCI you know they know that this is a place you can come for help and to connect to a broader community that maybe if we don't have it, because we're certainly not going to have all the resources, no. but we'll know, hopefully, where to go to get those resources and to connect people. We want to be that, that place that we can get things done, but if we can't, if we're not in your field and we don't have a project going on at that time in your field, we're going to get you to the place that you need to get to. Uh, and I, I want... I want people to see us as that conduit, right? That's what I mean about the research and so resource help. You're worried that asking them for information. Yeah. So we're, we're going to get something for it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm worried about. Right. You know, you well, know. We, want, we don't necessarily want something, not only want something from you, but we want to be able to provide something to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. So that's, yeah. That's huge. And actually, maybe that, maybe that falls into this piece, too. I think it falls into your initial business plan, what is the mission and vision piece of it, and your communications. But when, when I came to you guys and told you about what, what we were doing, I didn't mention money at all. No. I was just telling you what that's my awesome. mission is. Yeah. I told you what my mission was. Yeah. So th that's why I'm here right now, because it, it isn't about money. Right. It, it's about the mission. And so when you actually speak with people, you all really should memorize the mission and vision and come up with a way, and I'm sure you guys do, but come up with a way to say it when you ask for these things. You know, you start as, you know, oh yeah, you know, I, I work for the, the Center of uh, Compassion, Creativity, and Innovation. Um, we're doing some innovative things right now. I'd love to tell you about it. I'm 
By the way, have you ever heard of what crowdfunding is? No? Have you ever heard of Kickstarter? No? All right, well then let me, let me talk. Well, it's almost like any organization, any, any philanthropic organization has two segments of their population. Yes. One segment is the segment that is the philanthropic side who say, I'm very sorry about lost puppy dogs in Sochi, Russia. And then there are the people who want the puppy dog but can't, don't, don't have the monetary wherewithal to provide for that. So, so it's a, every organization has every not-for-profit, I think, and I hope, and, and we are of that same way. There are individuals that we would like to court for their monetary abilities, but then there are also those, those people who need our That's resources true. and need That's our, our yeah. you know, support in, in not a monetary way. Interesting. You know what? In, in that case, then, My I almost think... Well, no, you're right. No, you're, you're right. I almost think maybe it would be a better option once you have the resources, unless you have them now, to incorporate your own funding portal then. Because to me, when those people come to you and they need some help, maybe you just post them on your, your own Kickstarter, that's Westcon. You say, we'll help you raise money for what your issue is. Let us help you create a crowdfunding campaign through the center, and we can use our resources to help promote what you're trying to get. So, so not only are you, not only can you raise money for your own efforts, you know, for the resources that the center needs to thrive, but when someone comes in with a need, you can actually say, "I have something to offer you. This is something that we think is with our mission and vision." I think it's another option instead of sending them somewhere else to connect with someone else. It'd be a place where they can also start their own. They can start their own no, crowdfunding campaign. I think it's another yeah, tool. But that's it's another tool, mm -hmm. but, but, that's but that could be expensive is all yeah, I'm saying. Right, and, and that also is, to me, that's a far future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's your yeah. Not, not yeah. At the moment, at, at this point in our... our skeletons. Yeah, yeah. At this <laughs> no, point, no, right. even so, you have to start with that first seed before you can plant the whole row. So yeah. you've got to, you know... I like and, that And later. I think we're... we're, later, we're yeah, later for sure, but right now there's that immediate need or that yes. immediate um, yes. start. And then further down the road it, it, it will grow and blossom to other things. But I was just thinking that there is that, there are yeah. those two sides to it. Right, that's what you were saying, that we, we do need the philanthropic help in terms of the resources. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the things that I, I'm, I, I'm concerned about is getting you know, right now we have philanthropic uh, businessmen that donated money so we can have Lynn, you know, working part-time right now. And so one of the things we're trying to do is um, get Lynn so she, we, we have her on the payroll for, right. for you know, that's, that's a key need because for, for me, Lynn brings a lot of tools she, and one of the big ones are is that she can write grants. And so, yeah, it is, it's giant. And, uh, and and, and we cl we click. I mean, it's just it's natural. There's a, a great. She has skills that I don't have, <laughs> and that I need. And same with Helen. And I think that's what's really important. I don't think this would be as successful as it is without all of us. And 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 mm -hmm. we need. And, and and I need to have like a Lynn here. And Helen is here, and she thinks she's going to retire. But um, I have plans <laughs> to not let that happen. Um, but. It's it's that need that I know, mm. like Helen's saying right now, that I know I need to fill before we run out of the money that was right. already donated. And so I'm trying to line up things with the help of Lynn to get that so that we can have a bridge so that when some of the big grants come in, I cover the staffing side of it and I can just make the projects happen. Right, and there's also within an organization, any organization, you have to know if that individual that you are now contacting is which side of of your coin are they on? Are they the person who's and and not necessarily do they bring a monetary thing, but they may bring a connection. Yes. So that they're they're an individual who they may not personally be able to do that, but they might know of another source, like Lynn. If she has that ability to the grant writing and all the rest of that. So that's mm -hmm. a resource that she has. Yes. But Lynn herself is not going to necessarily write a check. You yeah. know what I mean? There, but but no, no, but the, but you have to know. It's like the 
the credit card commercial where things oh. are priceless. Yeah. You know, right. and it, you yeah, know, you the ticket to, to the baseball about, game, but yeah. also what's priceless about that mm -hmm. as well. So that's also part of it. You know what's interesting too? Um, as I'm building our crowd, I'm still in the building of the crowd mode. I'm not in campaigning mode. So really, when you're building your crowd in this like in the initial period, you're not really saying, can I count on you on donating at the moment? You're not really bringing that up. You're really just right. saying, can I just keep you in the loop as to what's going on? Mm -hmm. At some point, yes, it has to turn to that eventually. Mm -hmm. But but you, you could say it in a way, it's like, hey, you know, just so you know, we're launching on this day. There's about two weeks left. We'll be keeping you in the loop. Um, but like if you're inclined to donate at, when the time comes, that's great. But at a minimum, can you please just share it on your social networks and share it with anyone else who might be interested? But it was actually, from my experience, it's actually a, a little bit more than that. And, uh, you know, I think when you do things, and you, you, like we've done things and we don't have, we didn't have access to any money, uh, and we made things happen, that then people can say, well, they did it without any help. Imagine if they did have help. And I didn't even bring that up. The gentlemen who support us, our advisory board, they saw that and they're like, they literally asked me, like, Chris, who do you have helping you? And I said, well, if it wasn't for Siri, right? And I held up Siri and they're like, no, serious. And I said, serious? That's, <laughs> why, why is I Siri? And, and she's great. And, you know, that, they said, no, you have to have somebody who could be here, even has some phones, who can then, you know, uh, help you with the grants and get you... They thought uh, of that because they saw that this could really take off if there was actually more behind it. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, I'm lucky because I have Helen as a friend, not just as a colleague, and she, you know, looks out for what can make the events um, better and stronger. And, you know, and then she became more and more an integral part of this when we walked through the entire center. You know, it, so I have a number of people who came at this from different levels that were here at the beginning, but at the beginning at different places. And it's so cool to see it all come together mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and them to find out about each other, right? So when they found out about Helen, and, and, and one of the supporters saw Helen and I standing under one place of fire, um, <laughs> he was like, that's Helen. I said, exactly. And, and that